Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. My name is Bevan. This is Alexa. And we are about to do a CFI mock oral exam for your CFI check right. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. All right. So let's go. Okay, so we just went over task B. Uh, now we're moving on to task E, instructor responsibilities and professionalism. This is a mandatory task. Make it do. Mm -hmm. um, number one, aviation instructor responsibilities. This uh, may or may not be a CFI, could be a ground instructor. It is someone who is teaching a student a concept. Um, so this applies to all of, all of that. Um, <laughs> In order to help students learn, you want to be enjoyable, you don't want to be negative advanced, you want to have a positive demeanor, um, you want to have objectives for every lesson that you do, and completion standards as well, and these can be tailored to the student, whether they're first starting out, they're not going to perform anywhere near ACS or PTS standards, obviously. So uh, you want to tailor them to the student, and this will help students learn. Uh, you want to provide adequate instruction, you want to be safe, accurate, and thorough with everything you teach. And again, you're molding them into be a safe professional pilot and they are not only representing themselves, but they're representing you as well. So you want to keep that in mind when you're instructing people. And uh, minimizing student frustrations, you don't want to jump to critique them. You want to admit when you're wrong, be on time, be presentable. Flight training, flight training is really frustrating, so you want to try to mitigate those frustrations. Um, any questions on that? No, did you mention, I was trying to catch up because I was listening behind me, but did you mention keeping them informed? You just, you said providing adequate instruction, helping mm -hmm. the students learn. Yeah. Standards of performance. Yeah. Okay. Testing yeah. documents versus teaching. Yeah, we did, okay. Yeah. There's an acronym too called HEMPS for that, but yeah. it doesn't matter as long as you hit all the points. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to number two, flight instructor responsibilities. Okay. You want to mold the student into a safe and professional pilot, like I said before. Uh, there are certain obstacles that you may encounter when you're trying to teach a student. Physiological obstacles. Are they anxious? Are they nervous? And you can combat this by maybe giving them tasks, looking outside, or providing them with more information that just because the saw warning horn goes off doesn't mean you're going to fall out of the sky. Uh, plane crashes aren't common, and a lot of people, I feel like, in this industry, when they first start, they don't quite understand that. Um, so maybe just informing them better. Another one, air sickness. I had this when I first started as well. I didn't know if it was right for me until I eventually overcame that fear and um, maybe drank more water the day before or looking outside, maybe picking a different time of day to go as well because in hot summer Florida summer, it's pretty bumpy around 2 o'clock. So maybe pick an earlier time for that student to go um, so they, not, they don't have to be air sick the entire time. Um, ensuring the student's skill set, make sure the student is being safe, obviously, before you uh, solo them. Make sure that they're making progress. Can they do 10 takeoffs and landings from startup to shut down without you saying anything? Um, and it, with that, there's certain essential areas, special emphasis areas that you want to go over before you solo a student. So again, that would be the 10 takeoffs and landings to a full stop, text back around, did you have to say anything? No. Uh, then they might be ready as long as you go over wire strike avoidance, airspace, positive aircraft control, positive exchange of flight controls, stall spin awareness, runway incursions, go over all that kind of stuff before they solo. Make sure that they are level-headed and are not going to get lost in the anxiety and pressure of soloing. Because I remember coming back thinking about soloing, I didn't know anything. <laughs> so it's scary being an instructor on the ground watching your student take off. Um, moving on, or any questions with that? No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to professionalism. As an instructor, you commit yourself to a lifelong learning. Uh, you will never stop learning. Even you are always going to be a student. Uh, you want to stay up to date on your information. 
Uh, you don't want to be teaching someone that's something that's outdated or using the past. Uh, you want to be sincere with your student. You don't want to beat around the bush. You want to be honest and direct um, with uh, whatever you are trying to say to them. Uh, you want to accept your student. A lot of people have different personalities. You're not going to have two students that are the same. So you want to accept them in order for them to accept you as an instructor. Uh, make flying enjoyable. You want to have positive demeanor. You want to be positive at all times. You can get negative if they're doing something bad. Just slap them on the hand and tell them not to do that again. Again with the behaviorism. Um, because nobody wants to be around someone that's negative all the time. Mm -hmm. um, hygiene, you want to make sure you wear deodorant and <laughs> brush your teeth. <laughs> you know, they're not going to learn anything if they're smelling your BO or the plane. <laughs> uh, professional language, you don't want to be cursing left and right. Um, <laughs> uh, the occasional bad word, I guess, is okay, but you don't want every other sentence to be something like <laughs> Sorry I'll, have so to do, it, I'll have to do beeps over there. Beep, beep. <laughs> so you want to remain professional. Uh, you want to be a role model for them. Again, they look at you like you're a god. So um, keep that in mind when mm -hmm. you're instructing them. Any questions with that? No. Nope. Uh, moving on to evaluation of student ability. Obviously, uh, the demonstrated ability, this is your uh, technique to assess and critique. Um, are they held accountable to ACS standards in this point of the lesson? Yes, no. Um, are they demonstrating that they actually know the material or are they just going through the rote memory, uh, muscle memory type things? Um, you want to keep the student informed. You want to be specific when you're critiquing. Uh, you don't want to come off back, back after a landing and say, well, that landing was bad. No, give them why. Maybe you didn't put enough flaps in or maybe you didn't slow down enough. Maybe you had a higher deck angle. Be specific to where they can improve upon so they know where to go from. Um, correction of errors. You want to let them... Correction of errors. You want to let them kind of mess up because we learn from our mistakes. But obviously, uh, correct them before it jeopardizes the safety of the flight. Um, know when to jump in. Uh, you don't want to overbear them either and not letting them make the mistakes because they're not actually going to fully learn. I know from Tom yelling at me. <laughs> I know when to not, never do that ever again. So. Yeah. Sometimes um, you have to almost scare it into them. Yeah, exactly. Be yeah. stern. Mm -hmm. uh, elevate your voice. Um, that is it for evaluation of student ability. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, moving on to ins aviation instructors and exams. This kind of goes into endorsements, written tests, practical tests, how to prep, when to know that they are ready, um, know actually what you're talking about, and if you have any questions on endorsements or anything, maybe ask a CFI that's been around for a couple years. You're not going to know everything. Again, this is a learning process, but you should have a well understanding of everything. Um, and this relates to impact of failure on the CFI as well. If you send a student out just to get them off your hands and you know that they're not ready, the failure of their check ride is going to significantly impact you. They're going to look, the DPE is going to look at you because you caused this failure and how you could combat that. So uh, you have a lot of responsibilities as an aviation instructor. Any questions on that? Nope. Moving on to professional development. Um, again, you're always learning. There's certain groups or affiliations you can join. Uh, Wings is a good one, AOPA. Women in Aviation is a really big one too. Me and Bevan are going to go out in March to Nashville and go to their big um, convention that they have there. We always learn stuff from talking to different people all across the United States and it's really fun and enjoyable. Um, you can also join FAASafety.gov and enroll yourself into courses maybe on a subject that you haven't touched in a while and it can help refresh and jog your memory of uh, what's expected or the standards to that. Um, but that's it for Tasky. Any questions on that? Nope. Looks good. Okay. So that's task E. Hey everybody, what's up? We really hope you enjoyed viewing this video. 
If you live in the Orlando area and know somebody that is interested in learning how to fly or you're already a pilot and you're looking to add on to an additional rating, then please don't hesitate to give me a call or hit the web address on this screen for more information. It's www.atbataviation.com. That's www.atbataviation.com. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel today. We appreciate your support.